Okay, so today's video, it is all about forgiveness and it's about Callaway row forgiveness versus Ping's G400 Max, the current club driver that I have in my bag. I can't speak highly enough about the G400 Max. And to be quite honest with you, when I did the Callaway Rogue individual test, I kind of didn't go mad over it because I think I was comparing purely, I was looking at distance and looking at the Epic as a comparison and maybe why the Rogue had come about. What I'm hearing is from the guys at 4Golf here, they're fitting plenty of people with both the G400 Max and the Rogue this year. They're the two big sellers, and that's based on the dispersion numbers that people are seeing. What I want to find out is how this Rogue performs. Maybe I'll hit a few more shots this time round, give it a bit of a fairer chance. Compare dispersion, compare overall performance between a G400 Max and a Callaway Rogue. Let's hit some golf balls and find out. Okay, so let's start by comparing these very quickly from a, a visual. And I think there's major differences here. So straight away, there's gonna be things that appeal to uh, the individual eye. First of all, the matte and gloss finish is considerably different between the Callaway to the left and the right of the Ping. You've got the pattern of the turbulators and dragonfly technology, as Ping call it. More classic head shape, I would call it, from the, um, from the, uh, the, the road, and again, that carbon print that we've seen on the Epic as well and uh, the Callaway Chevron uh, for the centre alignment of the ball. I'm never really interested what's on the bottom of the club because we don't really see it that often but uh, we're using the standard Rogue, there's jailbreak technology once again in this uh, in this Rogue club. Same claims as last time, fast ball speeds but again a real concentration on this uh, larger sweet spot and um, extra help in terms of forgiveness. Uh, an increased sweet spot i think is where you're going to be looking at that extra forgiveness and improved dispersion okay so it's a forged face on the ping g400 max and i have to say that both sound and ultimately feel i really like i think it's very much approved improved uh, acoustics with this forged face and i do like it in terms of uh, in terms of the feel it is ping's most forgiving driver and the most forgiving driver that's out there on the marketplace at the moment in terms of moi so really interested to see how this one performs up against the claims of the road. So there it is in terms of looks, it's now very much down to performance and uh, let's go and hit some golf balls. Okay, so we're gonna start the ball rolling with the G400 Max, the club that I'm familiar with. Now these two heads, nine degree aloft, both set up as standard. I've got the CB Alter stiff shaft in the Ping, Ping G400 Max. And we'll have a look at the exact same setup. I've got even flow shaft in the, uh, in the Callaway Road. What I'm interested in here, so for me, 230 carry, 250-ish to 255 overall with this Ping G400 Max, first thing on a Monday morning, ball speed in and around, I don't know, 142 maybe? That's what the kind of numbers that I'd be looking to achieve. So that's where I've been at. But it's all been about consistency with this G400 Max, not about yardage gains, all about consistency. So. I don't think there's a great deal to talk about. Let's hit some balls and... I'll talk about the differences between the two clubs. Nice start. And like I said, and uh, if you've been watching my videos of late, you'll know that uh, I very much put down my recent change in form, how long it lasts for, I don't know, but down to this G400 Max simply because I've been finding fairways and I think that maybe in the past my driver reviews have focused purely on distance and not enough on dispersion so uh, learning as we go along and that's why I'm really interested to focus on on dispersion as much as anything in this test. No doubt about it, confidence is everything. I like the feel, I like the sound. It's quite a loudish sound from the Ping G400 without being that kind of loud gunshot, but it definitely has a nice feel to it. And again, that's something that probably just resonates from sound. I've never been a lover from the top line of this Ping range of clubs, to be quite honest with you. Like I said, even though I'm gaming it, I'm not really a massive fan of all the patterns of the Dragonfly and Turbulators. So I'm likely to be preferring the look of the G400, uh, of the, the Rogue, the Callaway Rogue. 
Right, I'll hit a few more shots. Let's see if we can get, I don't know, six, seven, eight shots with this G400 Max. Then we'll switch over and get into this um, Callaway Rogue. See if we can find any differences. Okay, so that's ball suit with the G400 Max. Now onto this uh, Callaway uh, Rogue. Uh, it's a Prodex X, this even flow shaft, and again, it's stiff, 65 gram. Um, like I said in the previous test, I concentrated too much on the claims of jailbreak technology and comparing it to Epic. I think that's what was in my head, and it was all about distance for me. I never spent enough time looking at dispersion. The claims I've heard since is how much more consistent this club is than Epic. And I'd be interested to find out. First ball. First thing to note is a considerable difference in feel. Um, and it's a very difficult one to describe. I think it's probably classic Callaway is what I would say. It very much feels like uh, Callaway of old. It's got a slightly softer feel, a slightly muted sound compared to the G400 Max. I do like the feel and I do like the sound, although it is slightly duller, like I say. Um, it almost slightly softer feel in the face, but a good ball to start with. So once again, we know the sort of comparisons, we know where we're looking at in terms of uh, ball speeds, 140 plus. Spinning around, I don't know, two, 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 three would be a good number for me. Certainly nothing wrong with those balls. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting, really, because in terms of the, the the balls getting out there, but in terms of sound, again, the way I would describe it is that the Ping G400 feels like it's really firing out there. Uh, it doesn't give you that same sort of feeling, at least in the head, in the ears. Um, it's certainly going out there, but it doesn't feel as though it's sort of trampolining. Oh, that's a good ball. They are so different in feel. That's such a putting the clubs and doing videoing the same club, same day, literally going from one club to the other. You really do notice the change in the sound and the feel. And I think, like I've said on many videos before, it's very much a personal preference, this, but I do think it's a considerable difference that some people would like and dislike vice versa on both clubs. Right, enough of me talking. Um, great looking club, by the way. Probably for me, prefer the look of the Rogue. Don't like the turquoise shaft, but other than that, I think the Rogue looks absolutely superb. Come on, Ping, get a gloss finish on that uh, G400 Max, will you? Because I much prefer the look of this thing. Anyway, it's a few more balls. Get up to seven or eight, like I said, and we'll do some comparisons. Okay, so once again, uh, brought the chair out to the front of the bay because uh, make the most of a little bit of sunshine at least. And I think we've got a good week coming in the UK and uh, we do need it. Right, let's get straight stuck into these numbers. I think, first of all, let me give you... Um, an opinion on both clubs in terms of what I've seen out there in performance. There's very little to separate them, um, in all honesty, and we'll see that in the numbers, I think, very shortly. This is a, very much about personal preference, but I think, let's throw up the dispersion. Um, I'm not going to quote what colour, because every time, once these figures get emailed from this machine, um, like I said, via email, the colour of the dots seem to be different than what I quote. Um, but at least what I am looking at anyway, and uh, I'll throw up a graphic if this is different. Um, first of all, you've got the yellow ball, uh, the yellow dots on my uh, G400 Max. Um, as you can see, what have we got there? Two, four, five balls slightly down the left and three down the right. And in all fairness, barring the one out fairly wide right and short, I think most of those balls would have found the fairway more than happy with that. So very, very happy in terms of performance there. The white dots that I am looking at, at least on this screen, flashing up in front of me now, from the Rogue. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, 
one of my um, although I've stopped doing it I've, I've, I've slightly hit in a more of a, um, a cut shot if anything by trying to deliver this club face a little bit square at impact but you'll see most balls nothing missed down the left all down right of center if anything again all once again leaked out one short and right but the groupings very good and uh, distances all very comparable let's throw up the numbers first of all so if we look at well let's start off with uh, i'll throw up the averages actually rather than individual balls i got two uh, knuckle balls as far as this morning is concerned and both almost identical 236 carry um, 264 overall so in terms of the two longest drives 264 overall was the best I could do on both of them but let's have a look at averages um, starting off with the G400 max 141.5 ball speeds and that compares to 140.8 ball speed on the Rogue. And again, don't forget, very much about consistency of strike. There is absolutely nothing in there whatsoever to separate those two. Uh, 2,400 revs on the G400 Max, 2,600 on the Rogue. So again, if you were looking to fine tune this, you could probably look at getting that spin number down and getting better performance out of the Rogue. I've no doubt that was uh, uh, achievable with a, a more accurate custom fit for me personally. Carry distances 228.9, 228.5, absolutely nothing in it. And overall on the Rogue, 253.4, 250, um, on the G400, 253.4, and on the Rogue, 250.3. Let's have a quick look at launch angle. 14.4, 13.6. There's just literally nothing to separate the two. In terms of the overall three yards difference supposed on the rollout, it's very much down to the difference in the uh, lower spin number that we could perhaps get down on the road driver. There is, like I said, in terms of dry ball data, very little difference whatsoever. I think it did go to show that dispersion on both these clubs is fantastic and something that's great to see. We've concentrated and manufacturers concentrated a lot on driver distance. We've also had the conversations that how far they've gone with that in terms of um, limitations with, with driver distances. So this focus on dispersion, increase in forgiveness or increasing the size of the sweet spot on these drivers is fairly evident for me and uh, that's good to see. In terms of a winner, there isn't one. They're very much um, all about personal choice, I would say. I'd gain both of these drivers. From a personal perspective, I think I like the sound and feel more of the G400 Max. That is about it. But um, other than that, like I said, it's all about the individual. Don't forget, I say it every time I do a video, these numbers are irrelevant to you in some respects because it's all about you getting custom fit. I know you know that already, um, but go out there and try them yourselves. But if you're looking for a new driver, if you're looking, if you're struggling with consistency, if you're struggling and you want to improve dispersion, these are two drivers well worth considering. Get out there and give them a go. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that video. I'm going to crack on with a few more. Thank you for watching as ever. Give it a thumbs up, comments down below. Have you tried any of these drivers and what are your thoughts? Love to hear from you. Right, I will see you very, very soon.